This video is brought to you by Paperlike. Hey, eScreen here, but feel free to call me E. Today, I'll show you how I use my 2020 iPad Pro and I'll break it down into 10 varieties of applications. I'll start with the more productive ways of using the tablet and towards the end of the video, I will gradually move to some more casual purposes. So let's start with writing. This video that you're watching right now came to fruition thanks to the iPad Pro, starting off with this very script, the words that you're hearing at the moment, all written down in Notion. Notion has gained a lot of popularity these days and admittedly I jumped on the wagon quite late but still managed to grasp the concept of it, utilizing it to run this YouTube channel. Notion is very powerful note-taking, table-making multi-tool that if employed well can deliver some very powerful data relationships and automation. I primarily use it to organize all my video ideas, scripts and business aspects of the channel. It doesn't work great on the iPad and my iPhone though. So if I happen to find a better native alternative for iOS and iPad OS, I might jump ship. So once a script reaches my level of satisfaction in Notion, it hits Grammarly, which to me is the ultimate AI powered writing assistant. Grammarly is great, especially for people who are not native English speakers like me. It helps me polish my flow and convey a message the right way, helping me improve over time. I recommend Grammarly to anyone and I'll be sure to put a link in the description below as well as all the other things that I'm about to talk about. Although Notion can be used for tasks and to-dos, I prefer to use something more traditional, and that is Microsoft To-Do, which I am a huge fan of because it was built by Christian Reber and the six Wonderkinder guys that built Wonderlist. Rest in peace. I like this app because of its perfectly clean interface and the easy listing of tasks, and most of all the fact that I can see the completed tasks and uncomplete them when necessary. This is great for when you want to create travel checklists, for example. Also, Todo allows me to attach more than one file to a task and it's free. Some of my other tasks and goals may go in a handwritten version under my next favorite app, Notability, which is just perfect for the iPad Pro. I recently came back to it, not sure why I left in the first place. With this app, I can do so much all thanks to the huge variety of paper templates, organization and customization and of course other features. I plan on appropriating this note-taking app a lot more because of its great support for the Apple Pencil and of course the built-in audio recording feature. The third key app in my task organization is actually a service called Hey. Hey is built by the Basecamp team. The brains behind this marvel is Jason Fry, the person who has influenced me a lot over the years, whose New York Times bestseller books I recommend you to read when you get a chance. Hey is probably the only email service and app that has fixed the annoying problem of all email apps, and that is of course the noise. Hey provides unique approach towards emails, which perhaps deserves a separate video, so I'll stop right here. Usually, Hey and Microsoft To Do live in split screen mode, as this gives me a great overview of my daily chores. Now let's move to some more creative apps, two of which are a cornerstone for my iPad use. First off, we have Affinity Photo by the company Serif. I have been using and praising Affinity products ever since they were released. They helped me almost take off my Adobe shackles. Affinity Photo is probably the best professional grade iPad raster graphics tool, something that Adobe tried to do with um, Photoshop for the iPad, but didn't succeed in my opinion. Affinity Photo helps me work on posters, video thumbnails, and lots more. The only app that still keeps my foot in Adobe's ecosystem is Lightroom, which is still king when it comes to photo retouching. Lightroom for iPad is perhaps the best image manipulation software, and the two key features that are most important to me are gradient masks, which are great for manipulating gradually some portions of a photo and the amazing lens and aspect distortion tools that will make any perspective look perfect. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, it's free and you can always change your mind. Now let's move to storyboarding my video projects. For that purpose, we go back to Notability, which thanks to the snapping lines and grid paper helps me draw and describe my shots scrapbook style. Very useful if you ask me. Moving on to some more detailed list shots, we use Notion, 
where we create a more sophisticated list of all the things we have to include in each of the channel's videos. I've set up a Notion template, which of course evolves over time, and it helps us organize all the ideas into hopefully crispy shots that you might enjoy. If you still don't have an idea of how versatile the iPad is, let me show you how it serves as a camera control unit. With the iPad, we move things around, in most cases cameras, thanks to our motorized tools by Edelkron. Precise slow slides, pans and tilts are key to delivering professional level footage, and the iPad is the control unit that allows us to do that. Sometimes the integrated camera screens and monitors are not enough, especially if you are a one-man show sometimes, and the iPad saves the day again playing the role of a remote shutter and viewfinder by using an app called Camerode. If you enjoy behind the scenes stuff, check out my free bi-weekly newsletter by clicking on this card right here. Moving back to basics, one of the key features of the iPad when it was introduced back in the day was being the perfect book reader, and to this day, I love reading on it. I use Apple Books and I try to read every day, recently enjoying Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules of Life and trying Dr. Disrespect's book. Apple News is my source of daily news and I haven't been able to find a better alternative so far. Sometimes I check the Pocket app if I have left something to get back to at a later time. The magic of the iPad doesn't end here. On many occasions, I use the tablet to extend my desk setup and add a second screen thanks to the built-in sidecar feature. Using the iPad as a second monitor works wirelessly and although there's a slight loss of quality, it works perfectly snappy. In most cases, the iPad holds my Final Cut Pro library while I use the main monitor for accurate preview and timeline manipulation. I mentioned Notability earlier, and I'll get back to it again since it is my go-to quick iPad sketch tool. The various paper textures, automatic line creations and snapping are perfect to create all sorts of sketches that I can later on turn into reality. Procreate is the next favorite drawing and sketching app of mine, which I purchased the day the Apple Pencil was introduced. If you have an iPad with an Apple Pencil, you have to have this app, even if you're not good at drawing. It is extremely fun to use and very handy for any sort of sketching and drawing. My son and I use it a lot to draw tractors, which is his favorite topic at the moment, and I use it sometimes to sketch or even do some whiteboard drawings for my videos because it can record your work in a time-lapse video. While on the subject of sketching and drawing, one of my favorite iPad companions that I have been enjoying forever is called Paperlike. Paperlike are kind enough to sponsor this video, but even before they decided to support the channel, their product is something that I have been talking about. In case you're not familiar, Paperlike is a very very unique iPad screen protector that does a lot more than just preserving my screen from the elements. Something which, by the way, I appreciate a lot, especially when my kids decide to be creative. Paperlike uses NanoDots technology to deliver a matte-like experience that helps the Apple Pencil glide effortlessly, eliminating the weird pencil tip on glass feeling, making writing, sketching and drawing on the iPad feel like actual paper. Also, the protector eliminates the fingerprints and being textured provides a great deal of satisfaction upon touching it, making it perfect for gaming as well. I even made my own iPhone paper-like protector from an older 12.9-inch pack because I enjoy it that much and I think paper-like should seriously do an iPhone version. Anyway, if you do a lot of handwriting notes and drawing on your iPad, then head over to the first link in the description below and check out paper-like because I think it's a must-have accessory. Throughout my day, the iPad Pro is my preferred streaming device selection, which recently orbits around Amazon Prime. I'm hooked on Prime's Bosch TV series, and since I try to steer away from consuming tech content, I love to drift off to some Doug Demure YouTube content this is a 1986. and some Scandinavian minimalism ideas. Occasionally, I play games, although I don't consider myself a gamer at all. I recently started playing Apple Arcade's NBA 2K21, which I am absolutely terrible at because I can never figure out which player I'm controlling. I get lost all the time, but I enjoy the quality of it a lot. Also, Grid Autosport is a bit more challenging for me and rewarding at the same time, especially if I tie it with my controller and switch to a full manual command of the vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, you might find my iPad video playlist useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or ping me on Twitter. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.
Thank mm-hmm. you.